Hello and welcome. Today I came across this thread on Reddit, stopwatch icon naming. Essentially, um, it's about the feature which has been in the game since, well, forever, where the game tells you where you should aim. Um, essentially, the thread is a link to a video by Notzer where he explains some of it. Um, essentially, it looks something like this, where you... Uh, aim your mouse cursor where, you know, you should aim to try to hit the target. The thing is that when you aim over the spot where the enemy is going to be, most likely, uh, then the stopwatch icon is going to do a little pulse, and that essentially tells you that you're aiming in the right spot. Of course, this doesn't account for things like the enemy turning, and it seems to take some kind of standard shell into account, so it mostly works for battleships. But anyways, I decided to try this, and uh, this is a match in the Izumo where I did this. After I read the thread, I was like, I need to try this, and immediately got out of bed and uh, tried playing a match with it. Um, so I picked the Izumo because it's a battleship. I read that um, it mostly works or works best with battleships because the aiming can take some time, and um, the other thing is that. Uh, Apparently it doesn't give you the correct aim for your ship, uh, or the, for your exact shells. Uh, apparently for uh, destroyers it wasn't as great, US destroyers that is. Battleships have some fairly fast shells so it should work best with this one. So this first salvo was on point from 21 kilometers. Like, it didn't deal any real damage but... Uh, it hit the ship, which is something that I actually often struggle with, like the first salvos from really far away are pretty difficult for me. But since this is the first time I'm trying out the stopwatch thing, I'm gonna test some of it. Um, it doesn't account for things like turning, so a turning target is really difficult, especially a cruiser because their speed is so... well... They are so agile and their speed is also fast, so it's a bit difficult to aim. So let's see my second salvo with it. And it's another sh- wow! It actually gave me a citadel hit. It looked like the shells were too far behind to get a real citadel, but nope. They were exactly on target and the second shot, which is like from 18 kilometers, was still on point. So this thing definitely works. Like, even from this angle, you can see that the stopwatch pulses for a little bit. Like, this is... This, this is... I just can't believe I didn't know such a thing existed in the game. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not certain how I feel about this kind of a thing in the game, but... Uh, I just can't believe I, did, I hadn't known, because I went back and looked at my uh, earliest recordings, which are from... June 2015, or at least that's the earliest I looked at, and this effect was in the game then. Like, the icon pulsed in the same way. I just never realized that. And I had never even heard of it by anyone either. When I talked to some people, then they knew about it, but they hadn't really used it. I mean, you don't really need to use it to aim decently, but it's... It's pretty incredible because it will tell you how you're aiming, like whether your aim is correct or not. Especially... I th okay, I think that it won't be excellent. Like, if you have good players against good players, it's probably not gonna make much of a difference. Because uh, good players tend to change their course all the time. So it's, it's not as useful for them. Um, so things like um, ranked battles aren't as affected, but in random battles you get people doing all kinds of uh, straight sailing a lot more, so I think in random battles it's going to be a lot more useful. So, I mean, it definitely works, just look at where the... I mean, it still takes time, so being decent at aiming is still very useful, as even if the target doesn't turn, because you still need to uh, 
move the mouse over the spot where you need to aim yourself. So if you're good at aiming, you'll be able to do it faster. Um, because, you know, uh, you still need to predict properly where the enemy ship uh, should be. Um, so that you can actually find the place where the stopwatch pulses a little bit. Because I have had some trouble in my subsequent games actually finding the spot where I should aim at. Of course that doesn't really mean that I can't fire because, you know, it, it, it's not like I was unable to shoot before I found out about this. But this is incredible. Not not because it ha it's in the game or what it does, but it's incredible because pretty much nobody I talked to used this before or even really knew about it. So that's just baffling to me. Like, you would think that such a important feature would at least be pointed out by somebody from Wargaming. Or perhaps it even has, it just has escaped notice from, um, well, the general players, but um, I guess it is what it is. Um, now on the downside of it, I'm sure this is going to kick a kick up a shitstorm because people think that, you know, aimbots are bad and all that crap, but I don't think it's really going to be that big of a deal. Maybe it'll teach people to, well, stop sailing in a straight line as much. Wouldn't that be nice? But who knows? Anyways, um, this is a match on the map, uh, Okinawa, and, uh, what you should do on this map is go for the B and C caps because uh, they are easier to defend because there's an island between B and A so you can hold uh, B and C both at the same time but it's a lot more difficult to hold uh, A and uh, B or A and C also another citadel hit like this is crazy I it's seven minutes and 20 seconds into the game and I have dealt 107,000 damage in the Izumo it's, it's incredible. Um, in the subsequent games, games, I haven't had quite as much success, but I haven't really played all that many Battleship games in randoms. It definitely was a lot less useful in uh, ranked battles. Especially because, you know, it's Nagatos. And you don't get uh, these long-range engagements as often. And by the way, that Nagato is very dead better to choose another target. I think that um, with something like this, if it stays in the game, because people seem to really, are probably going to be really upset about this. Um, like right now I couldn't really find the spot I needed to aim at, so I just fired anyway. But I'm sure people are going to be incredibly annoyed by this, or mad, or whatever you want to call it. So, I think it might be worth trying out, like, um, keeping it in the game for a while and see how it goes. And then, like, let people decide then. Like, don't let them be this knee-jerk reaction, because maybe it'll work out fine. Or maybe it'll just be horrible and ruins the game for everyone. But, uh... I would just like to see it work because it has been in the game forever and it hasn't been much of a problem so if people find out about it maybe it'll just make the game more equal I guess. Damn those shells are gonna hit the island because the island got in the way right then. Oh well it happens. Remember that this doesn't help um, battleships fight cruisers as much because, uh, well, cruisers are more maneuverable and they should be trying to dodge. Oh well, whatever. Uh, we have somehow got control of A and uh, DD is killing the enemy carrier that's at A, which is very surprising. Oh well, um, the enemy's got control of B, but just two cruises which we are definitely going to 
remove. I think on this map what you should do is uh, send some ships towards B, like destroyers, to cap it, and then most of your ships should head towards... Um, I mean, sorry, a destroyer should go to B, and then the rest of your fleet should go towards C. And then you should do your big fight and all that crap, and maybe send like a destroyer or two towards uh, A cap. By the way, I'm having trouble finding the spot I should be aiming at. Oh yeah, uh, one of the reasons why I think it might not be a bad thing to keep this is because... Um, It'll teach people how to aim. Confirmed wow. 31,000 damage in that salvo. What I mean by this is... Um, I don't know how high or low I should be aiming when a ship is standing still, for instance. Like... My aim is... Um, it's built up on experience. I don't know what the best position is to aim at. I just have a fairly good idea. So... If I have some kind of mechanism that'll tell me where the best spot is, um, even if I don't really use it, I will learn to aim with it. Or, sorry, I will learn to... I will learn the right spots to aim at. If I use it once in a while. Because I really don't know where all the good spots to aim at are. Like, if you give me a stationary target, I don't know where I should shoot. Because I don't know how high I should aim, like should I aim exactly at the waterline, or maybe below it, or maybe above it. Um, should I aim at the front of the ship, the middle of the ship, the back of the ship? These are things that I don't know, and I've played... At this point I've played like... 5,000, 6,000 games total, maybe? So, I don't know. Anyways, it's surprising that I'm getting this matchmaker question. I don't know what to answer because I never really paid attention. Um, at this point I actually alt tabbed and I opened the video of the match I had to see whether, um, you know, what the, you know, teams were to decide whether it was equal or not. Anyways, because it takes quite a while, I'm just gonna skip forward from this. Um, by the way, I don't actually know the answer. So I'm just gonna answer no. Well, um... 156,000 um, damage, that's a very good result, especially in the Izuma. Five Citadel hits in a game that didn't last actually that long. Two planes shot down, 46 shell hits, and I got high caliber. I didn't actually get that high experience because I mostly shot at battleships because I wanted to test this. By the way, this is great for shooting at destroyers as well because you'll, you know, have much more of an idea where you should aim. So I did 72,000 to a Nagato, 46 to a Namagi, 18 to a Nizumo, so mostly battleships, so that's why I didn't get all that much experience. But look at this. I shot 153 shells and I did 156,000 damage. This is over 3,000 damage per shell hit. That's a really high average, at least for me. I usually don't average that, that much damage per shell hit. Or even shells fire. And I made 137,000 credits. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, then please subscribe. And thanks for watching.